Hey, what's up? Uh, consider this part two of, or a continuation of the last video that I set out discussing a, uh, an interesting perspective on the use of machines. And obviously, like I always do, there, I leave things out and people interpret it how they want. It's very annoying and I'm just not very good at uh, uh, getting my point across to people that really don't have the same perspective to begin with. So what did I do? I left out, you know, really what does macro qualities mean? So I am not at all interested in using machines to get stronger, more endurance, etc. Those are all con I consider micro qualities. And the macro car qualities are high mass of endocrine glands, proliferation of T cells, a sport specific heart and high oxidative function of, of all type one and type two fibers. These are things I've learned from Val and uh, These are things that are probably consistent across all physical performers. Doesn't even have to be athletes. Uh, anyone that uses their body uh, or uh, anyone that has to operate under stress. So in that regard, I don't think those different systems of the body uh, will Need, need any type of, of specific movement in order to overload those particular systems. That, that's, that's my opinion. And you know, there's rationale to support that. But in no way, shape, or form uh, should those choices supersede the values of being able to translate and transfer those adaptations into movement. So you can still accomplish those four things without machines and kind of left that part out because it didn't really serve what I was trying to say, which is there are other ways to look at things. And I was discussing one that people asked me about, and uh, that was that. Uh, one of those people was my older brother, Mike Boyle, who really impressed upon me to, to, uh, to, to, to do that, to, to, to do these little videos, particularly this one, which is talking about a Twitter thread that he got involved in. And I always tell him, dude, don't, to stop it and he's like no if you believe in something you should tell him I'm like yeah of course and he was right and then I, I mentioned earlier I saw some kind of meme that said the same thing you know if you don't stand for something so it, that, that, that topic uh, was largely uh, lar lar the large amount of the communicators uh, were watermelons because watermelons are really good things it's a very very good thing to eat but you can't really communicate to a watermelon and they're gonna do what they do and they roll and they explode and that's just what a watermelon is you can't you can't convince a watermelon of anything other than what it is and that the particular topic was using machines in this case knee extension uh, with early stage ACL and rehabilitation which traditionally that has been uh, a non-starter, uh, given that the, depending on the type of surgery, which of there are many, many different types, and depending on, on a lot of other things, the excessive, well, may not be excessive, the external loading that creates anterior translation of the tibia would be counterproductive to the integration of the ACL, whose job is to check against this anterior translation. So that would be the reason, and I'm sure there's a lot of research. I remember I did read one of the links that somebody had posted there that basically was saying that a lot of folks had tried open chain loaded knee extension in early rehab and nothing bad happened, which is okay, like that's fine. That doesn't mean it's a, uh, a good thing to do. That just means nothing bad happened. Nothing bad doesn't mean good. And that's a very important thing to remember of all types of interpretation of messages of any, th any level of threshold, whether it's in the uh, double blind, et cetera, literature, level 1A evidence, or just something that you, somebody heard on the street. Uh, so the, um, so, you know, coach was like, well, don't tell me you're going to, do you ever, I'm like, come on, man. Like, most, I don't even work in places that have knee extensions. You know, like, I, have I used knee extension? Yes, I've used it in Gold's gym. And I use it at MI40 when I go to these, like, bodybuilding gyms because there's the best place you can get after it uh, when I'm on the road in these places that I'm living now, like, half the week. Uh, would you use open chain knee extension in, in an early stage? Of course, you're going to sit off the side of the table and you're going to kick. 
And we're gonna use BFR with that, and that will probably get us some valuable results. But I'm not gonna put somebody in knee extension. You can rig a band behind the table, uh, whether it's a slay sticks band or a very, very long TheraBand or, or, or a, a very thin super band from Perform Better. You can rig that and kind of slip knot it around the ankle or high up. There's lots of different options. But I'm not sure that, that the, the thing that really bothered me is that here's Mike Boyle who is communicating from a perspective of 40 plus years of training you know, legitimate uh, uh, athletes, um, as well as it, you know, you know, also RANS, as well as a bunch of general population, and has 40 years of making mistakes in getting people stronger. That's, that to me is, is what experience is about. Experience is not about how great you are, it's about how many mistakes have you made so you know not to make them again. And you know, his results are what, what he thinks they are and that they're, he's happy with them. I don't even care what somebody else says. Uh, and you know, now here's these other people that says, no, you're, you're doing it wrong. I'm like, that's a watermelon. Like, why are you even having this discord? You know, because here's people that aren't getting people stronger. Here's the thing. If you're doing early stage rehabilitation, can you measure increased force production? Yes, you can measure that. But ain't nobody got stronger because you are not able to overload the contractile tissue. You didn't make them stronger. They have, you might have, you actually just probably removed something that was deleterious for the force production that they could produce. So that's number one. That's why like, you're not getting people stronger. I'm not interested. I'm not excited about just because nothing bad happens that now you, your expertise, which is not 40 years, uh, versus somebody who is 40 years, that's, uh, um, you know, that, that's just, that doesn't move my dial. That, that's not my threshold of acceptance. Uh, and then somebody gave him a hard time, and I knew, you know, I, I never met the person, but, you know, very, you know, ardent, um, evidence-based, and, I, you know, she said something like, you know, how, well, then how do you know, how do you measure it? He's like, why should I measure? And then, you know, it's like, oh, my God. Like, like such a stupid conversation. Aside from the fact that you do have other options, how about walking backwards against some kind of load, like a sled or even just a band? You know, when you walk backwards, I think we'll get some significant quad action. How about uh, terminal knee extension, standing? How about Spanish squats? How about getting after, I just had a great conversation uh, with um, the head athletic trainer of a major division one school because I'm working with one of their studs. And you know, like, what do we do? Well, you got BFR that I already messaged. Like, what, what gadgets can we use? Well, um, I'm a big fan of FSM, which isn't necessarily gonna make anybody stronger, but it's gonna remove some of the deleterious uh, impact of being able to demonstrate strength and demonstrate quad contour. But you know, I have a complex that is from Europe where, or Canada, where it has higher settings that you can just leave that thing on and like, why wouldn't you leave it on? Well, the reason you wouldn't leave it on is probably because you don't work with people long enough uh, or you know, insurance or whatever. Or, you know, like you leave the thing on and you know, take a nap for you know, an hour or so and let this thing do what it does. And when they wake up, you do whatever therapy you're gonna do. Uh, and then when they wanna take a nap again, you know, we can you know, put, a, put something else to, to impact swelling and etc. So there's a lot of constructs that really, I, I don't find that you need open chain knee extension uh, because there are other options. And then I gave him the truth. I said, a lot of times I'm seeing people that have had very ineffective uh, rehabilitation process for a very long time, at which point in month five and month six, and they're a mess, I have asked them to do daily um, knee extension because we have to get ahead. And we are doing that in addition to the things that we would normally do. Uh, but that's later in the rehabilitation process. Um, I think we can get what we need with BFR, active motion. And I'm not gonna put somebody in a knee extension. Um, not, I'm not, I don't even care if it's safe or not. You have a flex tip, and obviously, and not obviously, I think a significant amount of time we're gonna see uh, very proximal hip flexor uh, limitations that affect the knee. 
in terms of whether it's anterior knee pain uh, or the ability to have a hip a knee flexion with hip extension. So I'm not interested in function of the knee uh, with a flexed hip uh, when we don't have function of the knee with an extended hip. And now we're just feeding into that spontaneous electrical activity that's protective in nature. I'd rather get after some uh, uh, facilitatory techniques that will limit what we're seeing at those proximal hip flexors. Um, so there's a lot of things that, that but, but really the conversation, Again, what I talked about in the, in the other message was like, I just tried not to get involved. And then maybe this is a, a political way where now I can just delete comments, which is exactly what I'll do. Because I don't necessarily, the biggest, most important thing to me is like, so what? Like, okay, you do what you want to do. Like, I don't, it, I don't know why we can, because I, again, I used to be that person and I'm so glad that I'm less of that person. Like, just stop. Like, like it doesn't matter what people do. People are allowed to do differently. And if you, you should think that you're better than what everybody else is doing. If you don't think you're better than what the other person's doing, then why the hell are you doing it? You know, it, 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 like, oh, now, uh, like, of course, you should think that you're the best in the world. Um... I left one other thing out, and it's ironic, very ironic, uh, that is about ACL. Uh, I'd like you to keep an eye out for the social media. Got another cool video that's going to come out, and uh, I think you'll see how it uh, relates back to, uh, to training the ACL and how we can fill in some gaps, including what we just talked about in terms of how do we get after the quad and how do we train uh, and how do we progress uh, both in a clinical and in a fitness setting uh, with somebody that has a compromised ACL post-surgical uh, or no longer is compromised but is uh, in the reconditioning phase and talk a little bit about return to play. So keep an eye out for that little teaser trailer and then uh, there might be a new addition to T equals R plus that I hope you can uh, feel really good about uh, feel really good about checking out. All right, man. That's the uh, that's the long and short of it. Mm, watermelons, not good. Good to eat, not good to talk to.